what's interesting about the calendar and be careful here i don't want everyone to think that the calendar is the end all be all um, i think that this is one of the things though that separates the super note from something like the remarkable and even from the books line and one of the reasons i chose it was because while it syncs with your google calendar or your outlook calendar it's not a full-on office app or a suite to where you're having to go through Outlook to do things. But it allows you to do a lot of the same functions that some of the planners do. And I think Supernote is really close to making this a fully functional tool that will be able to integrate and again, keep that laptop off your desk or out of the conference room. So for me, and I use this, it is tied to my work calendar, so I try to make sure that I don't show anything uh, going on at work, but you'll see that I created a note today, and down here, you have access to any note you created, and it pops right up. You can go in, you can open that note, you can edit that note. You also, when you go back out, you're still at the calendar, and what's unique about this is you can also write on that calendar. Now, let's see if this works. I tried it earlier. Yep, and you still have your lasso erase so your eraser if you have your gesture eraser on still works regardless so these are the incidental things and i do an in-depth video on this so i'm not going to belabor it and go through all of the things i use it for but being able to use the daily view the monthly view or the weekly view the daily view which is this one and the monthly view that shows you your events and being able to create events either by touching the screen or touching the plus, the navigation is extremely well thought out. You can handwrite on the weekly and the monthly. So you can, you can transfer that really easily. But what you can't do is handwrite on the daily. And they really, I think, are missing the boat on that because I think that's where it could be really useful to hand write in a meeting and then go back later and add it to my Google Calendar because I can already see if there are conflicts. And this little preview box down here. And if you go here, you see these dots. Those are showing me that there's an event on that day. And if I click on that, it's gonna show in this little box here at the bottom. And you can create a new note from either of those top views right in real time so for a lot of cases i don't even leave this view i don't even go into my navigation unless i'm going to go over to the quick navigation bar but the idea is i can stay in this view and any notes that i have are right there that were created that day i keep telling them give me today and last accessed and i'll be a, a happy person one thing that's kind of unique to the Supernote, and it's fairly new, and when you're in the PDF, and this is a function you lose, again, when we were talking about going from the PDF planner to, the, to using it as a template, is this idea of highlighting, then being able to go in and add actual comments. So the comments are, you go ahead and you go into the comment, and this brings up your, you can either type in or you can handwrite. And this comment turns into text, so it hand, rec it hand write recognitions it, and it gets embedded when you export into the PDF. So the example I give is I've used this for interview questions. So during a, an interview, I'll sit down and I'll ask the question, and as they're giving me their response, I'm handwriting in this section down here. And then it is going to go ahead and recognize up here. What I do, and one reason that this has been really helpful for uh, teaching, is I like to hand mark up papers. So I like to write comments in the margins. I like to do a lot of things like that that gives it that more personal touch. The problem is that that then becomes not accessible to screen readers and some other technologies that you really need to have in the modern age. 
um, for people who may be side challenged or whatever the issues are. But with that PDF functionality or that highlighting functionality, you can go ahead and highlight that text. And instead of using that annotation file where you're handwriting, you can add your comment right here. Now what that does, it still allows me to mark in the margin, still, still allows me to underline or to circle words. And so there's gonna be some extra content that's there, but there's also this embedded content where I can explain what may be wrong with a specific sentence. So whether this was, you know, grammar, which it may not recognize that one. Actually, it did. It got me right there. Uh, but the idea being that you can very much focus on the grading here and not looking at everything else. This one's kind of just, it's both a personal and professional aha moment. My frustration with Kindle has always been having to type in with the on-screen keyboard. Any comments or notes I want to make in the Kindle app. It's slow, it's sluggish, even in the old days of the tactile keyboard, it was just not easy. Uh, but here, and hopefully this will show, one thing about the super note that's really interesting that I just recently, if I can get this to open up, is that the keyboard is global, and I thought it was relying on the Kindle keyboard inside the app and it's not. So for my notes now, you know, we're reading Henry V in class uh, for the class I'm teaching right now. I can go into my copy and I can put interesting point. Of course, my handwriting here is atrocious, but it still picked it up. So it worked well. And then I can hit save. That is much faster for me than trying to do that with the typewritten keyboard um, or with the virtual keyboard. Now, I think once they get the app working with the desktop version, it may even be faster uh, that you would be able to do that. But for me, that's a time saver, uh, especially for those of us who may be older Kindle users and remember the buttons when they came out and then remember the, the virtual keyboard. It's just a quick way to add that note in and have it handwrite or hand recognize your handwriting right there. So that's just a, that's a fun one to me. When I go in, you'll see here at the bottom, it's got this EN and it's got kind of this blank space. That's telling me that the keyboard is paired with the device and then I can go here and I can disable that. Now I can go ahead and hit enter. One of the bugs, just to be real transparent, is the shift key doesn't work to capitalize. So I can hit caps and I can do Y, you know, you're looking at a five demo. So it works pretty quick. I mean, it's not as fast is some of the uh, the other things that I've seen, but it does work. Uh, and this is in a Word document, which is what sets it apart a little bit from pretty much any other device that's not using the native Outlook app. So like on Remarkable, that's a proprietary file. This is Word, so when you hit save and you open this document somewhere else, it will look exactly like this.